what is social innovation? The foundation of Hitachi is going back 108, 108 years. Mr. Wadaira, the founder of the company, when he started Hitachi, it was started as a small repair workshop. Uh, but he had a very clear vision in terms of whatever he wanted to do, that it had to make a difference to the, to the people. And he had a very clear vision. We have to do this in-house. We want to do this in Japan. We want to build technology in Japan. That was his goal. He wanted to make a substantial difference to the society. That's how this whole concept of social innovation started. Japan was having uh, issues with importing uh, components, uh, large turbines for power generation. He was, given, he was given the challenge by the government to actually design and build this within Japan. Within four years, they had the water turbines designed and built in Japan. That's the sort of uh, individual Mr. Odaira was. He, he took Hitachi to quite significant heights. By 1940s, uh, late 1940s, uh, most of us understand what was happening around the world. By then, Hitachi was quite substan had substantially grown, uh, especially in the heavy industrial engineering space. That is the core of Hitachi. That's what Hitachi is all about. UBI is a fascinating place in that it's one of the few places in the world that studies directly the fundamental mechanisms that regulate brain function. What that entails effectively is multidisciplinary science in the one building. So we're trying to understand why it is that people get sick in depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, these terrible things that happen to people. And how do you treat them? Most treatments are old and many not that good and a lot of them we don't have any treatments for at all. We've been 15 years, this is our 15th anniversary, and we started with something like 20 people in 2004, and now we're nearly 500. We have a very strong imaging suite here, you know, cellular imaging. We have a very strong suite doing brain imaging, and we provide molecular tools and genetics. We are constantly facing an uphill battle as far as data growth is concerned. A lot of the equipment we have generates huge amounts of data. How do you store that data, track it, analyze it? One particular device is spitting seven terabytes of data an hour. We have a particular experiment that runs 500 terabytes per day. We didn't have enough bandwidth to drive our storage fabric uh, into our Hitachi arrays. We needed more bandwidth to both of those places so that we had better quality of service or research data coming in and out. So this is the kind of things that we help provide here so you can have access to data and provide analytical tools to analyze them, but also to share data between groups, which is absolutely critical. We use Brocade Gen 6 fiber channel switches from Broadcom, uh, signaling at 32 gig. That's the, the switches we use as the backbone for transport between our Hitachi arrays. It's a sense of co-creation. We've got a problem uh, and we need to solve this and we need to be involved in solving this with you. To generate the best primary data, you, you know, Having good infrastructure allows you to collect that data in the first place is absolutely critical, right? So you might have a clinical study, for instance, you know, which you might think on transferring data for, for, let's say, 10 patients. If it's going to take you that long to simply transfer and analyze that data, you know, the time frame for those 10 might be six months, say. Okay. Now, when this, with the new implementation, you can think about doing that in a week. Getting the data off an instrument and getting it to primary storage faster is really, really important. Once you've gotten it to primary storage, you can actually do something that we call the real work happens, and you actually supercompute against it and you analyze the data. It gives you the ability to do many more complex experiments, which you wouldn't even think about doing unless you had this in place, but now you just go out and do it. The science literally can't happen in this day and age without something that underpins it with extreme capability. Together, Hitachi Vantara, Brocade and the Queensland Brain Institute are pioneering in co-creation in the ability to take research and turn it into something real. So, Professor Saar stated that it takes them um, six months to get an outcome from all this data. So we think about all the data that's getting pumped through and it's one of the most exciting things about innovation and social innovation, it's creating that outcome. So it's not an outcome that IT delivers, but it enables it, yeah? And the outcome is based on what we can give back to patients and how quickly we can give that back to them. Um, and to take it from six months down to weeks is amazing. So we can fail fast and we can win fast. 
From an organisation like this, where we're, where we're dealing with patients and well-being of those patients, it is, this is critical. And they talked about how much data they have. So we, we, we see this with all of our customers and all the customers we deal with. This is not a dissimilar trend, regardless of the industry, whether it's health or manufacturing or mining. So we think within the next 10 minutes, 1.5 million devices will connect somewhere, somehow. Yeah? And look at how much data they're going to create. Now here's the big one. If we talk about what Hitachi does, right, and how we innovate not just around medical, but we do it around all of the heavy machinery, mining, manufacturing, etc., we're going to start connecting those devices now with over 80 billion more devices connected by the 20 by 2025. Now what that means is that there's going to be an explosion of data. Now today, 90% of the data we see in the world today was created in the last two years. So by 2025, we're going to see more and more and more data. And that takes us to the next step with our customers. Um, and Gartner believe there's three Vs for big data. And we see this represented in all of our customers. One is volume, and this is in no uh, preference or order. One is volume. How do we deal with the great volumes of data? So all of this data that we're getting from places that we never got it before, not just from servers or tablets or PCs or printers or whatever we're doing, we're now thinking about devices that we never um, received data from before. Um, we're, we're getting them from video. We're getting them from, from sound. So we can place a microphone on machinery to understand how machinery is working. So the revs change and we're collecting that data. Then how do we deal with the different varieties? And we talked about that, right? We're talking about video, we're talking about um, plain data from refrigerators, etc. right? Not just the standard places uh, like Splunk and Spark and Hadoop, but now we're collecting data from all sorts of different avenues. And then the velocity of that data. If we're collecting data and we develop a business outcome with one of our customers, how do we give them insight in that data and maybe turn it into automation in the future so we can react quickly to changes in our environment? Most organizations then, they embark on this digital strategy. I'm going to, I'm going to build a digital strategy within my, within my organization. Half of those organizations, that digital strategy is not working because their digital strategy 90% of the time is not tied to a business outcome. So if we think about the Brain Institute, their digital strategy right, is, is based on them providing better care um, to their patients, better outcomes to their patients, to find what makes them sick and give them a cure to that. For us, our social innovation is to make sure that the, our clients have the right people there at the right time. This is a little device called the Hitachi Vein Scanner, which it was originally expected to sell about 200 pieces in Australia to the um, Treasury office for securing PCs. So when I saw this, I suddenly went, well, this is a far better solution than fingerprint scanning, etc. And so we took that, and now I think we've got over 10,000 in the field now in Asia Pacific. For vendors, we work with all of the usual IT vendors, AWS, Azure, um, Google, we've worked with um, HP particularly, uh, uh, the old IBM solutions, etc. There's only one vendor that we actually genuinely have a partnership with, which is Hitachi. Like they will, particularly the smart um, city side of it, we're very interested to see how that works and how our workforces can actually be part of a smart city environment. So that's sort of where I'm at. I'm looking at the organic matter in the picture, which is most of your businesses will have workers that we manage. And that's why we want to make sure that they can manage their lives better. We are more into an industrial products uh, uh, space. Uh, we make industrial air compressors, which are used primarily into mining, manufacturing, food, and so on, into lots of industries. With, with industrial products, um, innovation comes in small forms. It's not necessarily uh, a revolutionary product development. Sometimes the innovation is, is small, but it is custom designed to uh, solve one specific problem. In November uh, in Sydney uh, is, is a great opportunity to understand more about all these things that Hitachi is doing. That has been a great, uh, uh, there's, there's been one of the uh, 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 perfect platforms for Hitachi to demonstrate what it's capable of. Uh, so we work with our partners for that. It's a clear example for, one thing I must admit, I always insist, I always t tell my team about this too, and we share this globally. We cannot do this alone. We need partners. We need every partner to work with. Like in this room, I have so many partners here working with us. So we need that to, for us to, be, to, to enable us to bring the solutions to make life easier for the people out there. It's all about the quality of life. Mm -hmm.